Live from New York City tonight, an issues exclusive. We need your help to find a mother who vanished Tuesday without a trace. Her suspicious disappearance has her family devastated and in a panic. And they are my special guests tonight. Cindy Sambueso dropped off her daughter Tuesday morning and went to work at a massage therapy clinic. She sent a text around 11.15 a.m. But when her client showed up for an appointment at 3.30, Cindy was nowhere to be found. Her car, her purse, her appointment book, all gone. But her cell phone was found inside the clinic, which was locked. Police say there has been no activity on her credit cards or her bank account. This is unbelievable. This woman, uh, a wonderful mother, uh, a beautiful woman, loves animals, cares for people. It's unbelievable, and we're very concerned about her. Straight out to Kat and Robert Sambueso, Cindy's daughter and ex-husband. Now, just to clarify for our viewers, Cindy moved back into your home, Robert, uh, about a year ago. She had had surgery, she had some financial difficulties, and you opened your heart and your home to her and to Kat, uh, 15 years old. Um, first of all, I have to say this has to be a horribly horribly scary time, a difficult time. We want to help. We at Issues want to get this out there so somebody who sees something, if you've seen anything, you call police immediately. Uh, first of all, uh, sir, what happened in your opinion? Uh, we, we don't know. The facts are showing that there's been no foul play and uh, we're just hoping for the best at this time. We're trying to stay positive and uh, relying on each other with family and friends. And, uh, you know, I'm really appreciative to all the uh, social and, and national media we're getting to get the word out. So, like I said, we're not sure what happened. Uh, she went to work. Uh, unfortunately, she showed up and she disappeared. And, and we don't know any further. So we're now, asking for the community and their help. Cat, what are you, 15 years old? You saw your mom the day she disappeared. Uh, my understanding is you said that on the day she disappeared, Tuesday, July 19th, that morning, she was acting strangely and um, she actually sent out two sort of unusual text messages to you and to her ex, Robert, who's sitting next to you, at about 11.15 a.m. Uh, remember, her cell phone was found in her office, which was locked. But So we have a window of between 11.15 a.m. when she sent the text and 3.30 when she failed to show up for an appointment. Tell us what those texts said, Kat, and how she was behaving in an odd fashion. Um, I mean, she, it wasn't really strange. I think she was just kind of uh, a little scattered after we took my uh, DMV test. I think we were just both extremely happy. And I mean, those text messages, um, again, I think she was just extremely happy for me. And I think she was just so proud of me that uh, I did pass and now I can start my driving career. And uh, usually, um, yeah, that's not very strange at all. I, I think she was just in a very happy mood. What did the text say, Kat? Um, it was just saying, um, you're in my whole entire world. I love you so much. You're the best kid in the world. But, I mean, my mom would always send me those kinds of things. I mean, um, me and her had such a tight bond. We were so close to, um, to one another. It was, yeah, it was an inseparable bond. Well, let me tell you something. Uh, we are not referring to this lady in the past tense. We hope to find her safe and sound and bring her back to you, Kat. Uh, chief Jerry Dyer, you're the police chief of Fresno. Um, you've labeled this very suspicious. Uh, this beautiful woman, 50 years old, beautiful, in great shape, brown eyes, 5'10", 130 pounds, drove a red four-door Honda Accord, uh, license number 4, LVP286. I actually want to direct this to Casey Jordan, criminologist. Um, my understanding is she did have some kind of mystery 12 noon a massage appointment and um, right. we don't know who that mystery massage appointment was with then suddenly at 3 30 the family gets a call oh she missed the 3 30 appointment so my mind tells you go find out who the 12 noon appointment is and that person might lead you to her Absolutely. And there's got to be a lot the police are looking into. We know she had a 12 o'clock appointment. And ironically, even though her cell phone was left at the office, and we all know that the cell phone signals can be pinged and traced if the cell phone is moving. Well, that got left at the office, so we can't trace that. But also her appointment book 
got taken. Now that is a huge, huge red flag. Even if somebody forced her out of the office, forced her to lock the office, allowed her to bring her purse with her, but made her leave her cell phone with her, for them to have the foresight to bring that appointment book makes you think it could have been her mystery 12 o'clock appointment. But without that book, if she didn't have any computer files to record that, if it was a brand new client she was seeing for the first time, the police are probably going to hit some big obstacles in trying to figure out who that person is. Yeah, and let me show you a Google map of the area. It shows Cindy's last two known locations, a spot near uh, the 41 freeway, and this is in the Fresno area, where she dropped off her daughter at 1030 in the morning, and then it advances to, well, where she supposedly went to work just a few minutes away at the massage parlor. And, um, okay, so that's not very far. And her massage parlor, by the way, we want to say this, at the intersection of Nice and Palm. Anybody who lives in the Fresno area Keep your eyes out. We're delighted to have Chief Der Jerry Dyer, who is the police chief of Fresno here. Thank you for joining us, sir. Uh, what can you tell us about this woman's disappearance? Well, number one, it's highly suspicious uh, in terms of the fact that she had left her cell phone behind at the business. Uh, she missed a, an appointment that she had at 3.30 at the massage uh, therapy business. Uh, but we have really no information that would cause us to believe that there's foul play involved, at least at this point in time. And uh, we have had information um, provided to us, uh, you know, regarding places where you know folks think that she may be um, some other information that's been helpful and we're following up on every one of those investigative leads uh, but at this point we've not uh, confirmed where she's at well uh, I'm wondering a couple of things one no offense to Robert Sambueso you are her ex-husband and often when somebody is living with an ex which is unusual but I totally understand it and I have no judgment on that at all whatsoever if they have a new love interest, they might try to keep that love interest from the ex-husband for just for the sake of not hurting somebody's feelings. Are you investigating that possibility, Chief, that she might have had another love interest? Well, we're looking at another uh, a number of avenues, but obviously we're uh, contacting all of her past acquaintances that we're aware of. Uh, fortunately, we do have the phone, so we know uh, what contact she has within that phone. And there's always that possibility. And, and when we're doing these types of missing persons investigations, uh, it's important that you're open-minded and not allow one piece of information to drive you in a certain direction. And so we are looking at past acquaintances, any uh, recent acquaintances. And uh, we've obviously done a number of things that I can't say publicly because I don't want to give away those investigative leads or strategies, but I can tell you that we're looking at every single aspect of this uh, case. Chief, can I ask you, what about the 12 noon appointment? That strikes me as very bizarre. She had this mystery 12 noon appointment, and then suddenly she gets a call from her 3.30 appointment saying she didn't show up. So what happened? Do you know who the noon appointment was with? We do not know who the 12 o'clock appointment is with. She had a um, her book, her calendar uh, that was was taken and uh, we're assuming that she took that with her because it was not in the business and we do not even know really if she even had a 12 o'clock appointment other than what she told her daughter that she did now we put that out in the media yesterday asking if anyone had a 12 o'clock appointment with her to contact us and we've not received any calls so either that person is not in town isn't aware of what's occurred or for whatever reason doesn't want to contact us all right if, let if me ask you this question her car did you recover her car we we have not recovered the car yet so her car a red four-door honda accord license plate 4 lvp 286 you are looking for that do you have like an all points bulletin out for that uh red four-door honda accord yeah, we've, we've entered both uh, Cindy's information as well as the vehicle information, not only in the state, but the national database. And we've been in contact with a number of locations uh, where we know that Cindy has frequented in the past. We had our uh, license plate readers, uh, which automatically read license plates in, in the city. We had three of those out yesterday circulating the entire area. So we've done everything we can to try to locate that vehicle uh, up until this point. Okay, well, can you hang on for the other side, Chief? It's just a couple of seconds, and I've got a couple more questions for you. We want to find this woman. We want to get her back safe and sound. Sound, we've got so much more on this missing mom. Plus, later, does Casey...
Breaking news tonight, we are on the hunt for this missing woman. She is beautiful. She's a 50-year-old from the Fresno area, massage therapist. She has a 15-year-old daughter. She lived with her ex-husband and her 15-year-old daughter. She disappeared from her office Tuesday, July 17th. She sent her uh, two text messages to her family at 11.15 a.m. She was supposed to have a noon massage appointment. And then at 3.30, her 3.30 appointment called the family and said she has not shown up for that appointment. Her cell phone found inside the office, which was locked. Her car, her purse, her appointment book, all missing. Uh, Chief Jerry Dyer, have you done a check of the cell phone pings to see where her cell phone was? Or did she simply go straight to the massage uh, therapy place and that's where it ends well we're doing some some tracking in terms of what her path was um, but what we do believe is that she left the home and went um, directly to the to the massage business uh, the, the fact is when she left home she had a basket filled with clean linens that, that basket was found at the uh, the business uh, along with the cell phone being inside so uh, we're not only tracking that down but we've also um, track down uh, the use of credit cards. Um, any any credit card use? Bank withdrawals, and, and we, we do. Pardon me. Did you get any bank withdrawals? Any credit card use? You know, I uh, can't talk about that yet because it's uh, All right. pertaining well, how about the investigation. This? I just want to jump in. What about a video from the mall where this massage therapy place was? Yeah, there was there was no video at that mall. Uh, we've checked some nearby video policing cameras that we have going through trying to locate the vehicle. And uh, we also are checking um, some nearby video that we believe okay. may allow us to see that vehicle pass. All right. Through. Thank you, Chief. I appreciate it. Uh, if you want to hang on, that's great. Um, Kat Samway. So, um, did your mom have any kind of a new love interest? And, and I, it might be awkward for you to discuss that in, in front of Robert, but we're trying to save her. We're trying to find her. We can't worry about embarrassment right now. Kat? Um, no, not at all. And I mean, like I said, my mom and me had a tight bond. She tells me everything. And I mean, um, no love interest. I know that she loved every single one of her friends and that she loved us so much. And she was so giving and gave 110% to everything that she did. But I mean, no, there was nothing of that Are, going Is, is on Robert your dad, your biological dad? Yes. Okay, so... Uh, Robert, did you notice anything about Cindy's uh, behavior in the last couple of days that would seem like she might want to leave of her own accord? Uh, no, you know what? Uh, of course, Cindy was under some stress financially because uh, you know about the surgery and she lost a portion of her business clientele. And with the recession, you know what? That's tough always because massage is one of those things that it's a luxury and a lot of people can't afford it. So that's what drove uh, Cindy to have that critical conversation to move in. And uh, the understanding was, you know what? Hey, you know what? No, no pressure. Uh, I got an extra room anyway. I've got a three bedroom, and Kat and I had uh, one bedroom piece, and uh, we had the extra one, so she moved in. And uh, I told her, just focus on paying your bills down. So that's what she was doing. Uh, Casey and, Jordan, uh, criminologist, I want to bring you in because I, I have a very good friend who's a massage therapist. And this is the truth. She tells me all the time that the men she's giving massages to ask for something more. And I think you know what I'm talking about. And it, it's a very disturbing yeah. aspect of her job that she doesn't like. And she considers herself a professional. And she's like, no, that's not what this is about. But she says she's often yeah. these men can become very aggressive. Uh, do you think that could be something that might have happened, something like that? Yeah, I'm proud of you for broaching that subject because I was thinking the exact same thing, that this was a first-time client, apparently. Somebody came uh, picturing a different kind of massage, looking for sexual services, and of course, that's not the kind of work she did. And some people take no for an answer uh, nicely, and some people do become very aggressive and fight back or, or try to force an issue if they don't get the answer they like. But I have a quick question for Chief Dyer, if he's still on the line. I did a little research and found out another woman went missing from the Fresno Mall about uh, four to six weeks ago and uh, Heather Ballinger I wanted to know if she had been found because she answered a Craigslist ad for a job wow. and uh, I don't think she's been found yet